What ho, ladies and gents, how's it going? Marvellous weekend here in sunny California. It is hotter than a lizard's ball sack. And welcome to your favourite weekly news roundup, the shite you see on the BBC. It has been a marvellous week of pure, unadulterated shit from the BBC this week. The belligerent, bourgeois, communist news group has been uh, hard at it this week to bring us all of the big issues, as long as those issues revolve entirely around the worries and concerns of middle-class left-wing arseholes. <laughs> Honestly, I had to cut it back, cut, I had to cut it down this week to what I would normally do. Um, seriously, I could fucking talk for an hour. Like it was just endless reams of puerile. Owen Jones style fucking digital diarrhea this week. You fucking, it was endless. I don't even, I swear to God, I don't look for it. I don't even try. Trust me, I don't do this for a full time job. I'm very lazy. I literally just pop, put the website up every morning, have a quick 10 minutes looking at the fucking homepage. It is never ending dross. It's got to the point where it feels like. 19 year old semi-literate activists write the entire website like a really really bad student union group newspaper or something uh it's endless so i had to cut it down to what three six seven stories just to get through it uh i'll start at the top just listen to the words they use in this piece about trump uh, and you tell me whether or not you think it's needlessly despicably hyperbolic when it comes to slagging off Trump and, and adding pointless extraneous details about slaves and shit as if fucking Donald Trump invented the practice in 2016. Mount Rushmore, Trump denounces cancel culture at 4th of July event. They put it in apostrophes like, it doesn't really exist, cancel culture. It hasn't been dominating our lives for the last four fucking years. It's just a conspiracy theory, cancel culture. We just bent David Starkey over Jack Dorsey's kitchen table and rogered him with a fucking broom shank for two hours because he dared say a four-letter word during an interview. But uh, no, cancel culture is not even a thing. It's all in your mind, lads. It says US President Donald Trump has railed against the cancel culture of those who toppled monuments during recent anti-racism pro protests in a speech to mark 4th of July at Mount Rushmore. He condemned those who targeted statues as angry mobs. They aren't angry mobs, yeah? That's why I'm doing quotation marks, because they're definitely not angry mobs, not really. They're pleasant, civilised mobs with more of cocktails of peace and flamethrowers of love and bricks and fucking bike locks of happiness. They're, they're, they're not angry mobs. Trying to deface our most sacred memorials. Mr. Trump accused protesters of a merciless campaign to wipe out our history, defame our heroes, erase our values and indoctrinate our children. Seriously, are any of them baseless accusations or is that a factual representation of 2020? Yeah? We will not be silenced, he said. The president, who has been heavily criticised for his handling of the coronavirus pandemic by fucking you, made little reference to the disease that has now claimed almost 130,000 American lives. The largest single day rise, just drop that in there. Nothing to do with anything. Masks and social distancing were not mandatory, despite warnings from health officials. Yep, he's a cunt. He's a cunt. Why? why, why? He's basically a baby raper. The location, too, was controversial. Mount Rushmore features the carved faces of four US presidents, two of whom, George Washington Thomas Jefferson, were slaveholders. <laughs> Just drop that in there. Just stick that in there. One of them, freedom. Why don't we put him in there? No, fuck him. We're not talking about that cunt. It also stands on land that was taken from the indigenous Lakota Sioux by the US government in the 1800s. What, honestly, what's, what's that in there for? Just bring it up. Like... George Washington and Thomas Jefferson should feel guilty because when they were being about their business, they should have been thinking, hmm, maybe middle-class journalists on the BBC will take umbrage to the fact that I'm not acting like them in the 18th century. Yeah, they should have thought of that. The ignorant savages. Yeah, fair. Addressing Mount Rushmore himself, uh, Mount, addressing Mount Rushmore itself, the president said the South Dakota landmark will stand forever as an eternal tribute to our forefathers and to our freedom. The monument will never be desecrated. These heroes will never be defaced. 
fucking brilliant. Yeah. So this was just, uh, again, I'll link all of them at the end for you to read of your own free will because I can't bring myself to go through the whole fucking thing. But look, the first five paragraphs there is just dripping with social justice buzzwords and fucking bollocks. Why they told us two of whom were slave owners. Like, that's controversial. No. Like, they can't, they can't put anything in. If you're going to hold everyone to the standards of now, nobody from history is, is good. They're all cunts. All of them. Everyone. Captain Cook, cunt. Martin Luther King, ah, oh, he was horrible. Misogynist. Cheated on his wife. Womanizer. Sleazy. Fucking, he's scum. Gandhi, cunt. Winston Churchill fought against the literal Nazis. Little fat arsehole. <laughs> It's it's crazy. Charles Darwin. Oh yeah, he once said that he didn't think Africans were as cultured as Europeans. Fucking vermin. Kill him. Dig him up. Kill him again. It's fucking madness. Reactionary, ridiculous madness. You don't need me to talk any more about that. That's fucking bullshit. They shouldn't have even put it in there. Moving on. Needless, venomous race baiting. White couple charged with assault over threats to black family. Look at the photo they've used. Like she's a fucking serial killer. A white husband and wife have been charged after a woman pulled a gun on a black mother and her children during a confrontation in a car park. Fucking. It shows Gillian Rustenberg pointing a gun and shouting, Get away! Local sheriff said it stemmed from a bump. The black family was not armed. The Wustenbergs have been charged with felonious assault. Like, so just writing it up like, she's fucking evil, whitey is a cunt, black families are nice. Don't want to get into it, I'm not a race beater. I don't think we should do this fucking shit. I think it's criminally irresponsible. That type of shit happens a hundred times a day in any state in America. There are fucking 330 million people here, it is common as fucking muck. People get arrested for dumb shit all the time, losing the temper, a bit of road rage. It's not a big deal. To make it into a big deal, put a photograph like that on it and fucking write a headline like that is disgraceful and despicable in this day and age. It is pure xenophobic race pain of the worst kind. And the coup de gras, the cherry on top, is just watch the actual footage of it and tell me that these people are pure evil embarking on a racist hate crime for no reason, as the BBC would have you believe. ...wants to violate a 15-year-old... No, I'm asking a question. She's a she, child. She bumped into me when so I... So if she did something wrong, she needs to apologize. If she did, this, ignorant no woman, apologize. this ignorant woman... If this ignorant woman bumped into a 15-year-old... Correct? And correct. you're on camera. Okay. You're feeling Hopefully, threatened. Okay, well, go in. No, Mom. I got... You're blocking me from getting no, my... No, girl, no, we won't. Okay, no, we won't. No, we won't. You're ignorant. She's ignorant. She's very ignorant. Yeah, I said it. You say something, I'll beat your white ass. You do something. Please put your Do something. Do something. Please. Who the fuck do you think you guys are? Who do you think you are? Who do you white think you are? You told her her name. She did nothing. Yeah, I did. I did it. No, you didn't. You're very racist and ignorant. Uh, 
Call Richard back up here now. I got it. Don't you fucking jump behind oh, my no, car. No, I ain't jumping on your car. What don't you fucking, fucking jump behind my car. What do you reckon? Look at the YouTube comments. They're charging the couple for a four year felony for what is obviously self defense. Finally, unedited video, unlike the scum that posted it on Twitter, justified. Rene, I'm black, and I can honestly say the black woman and daughter were wrong. The whole thing is getting ridiculous. Accusing people of being racist when you're the only one bringing it up. This is going to embarrass a lot of normal black people. Bumping into someone who's not racist, even if they didn't apologize. Her going, uh-oh, is her realising she got something good enough to post on Twitter so she can cancel a pregnant white girl. No racism here, only self-defence. Um, yeah, make your own mind up, but compare it to the BBC's version of events and that photo and that race-baiting headline. It is fucking despicable. You horrible, horrible cunts, BBC. Personified in this case by a horrible cunt. I, I actually feel guilty. I feel guilty for ever having paid my license fee. I feel less guilty if I got caught fingering my next door neighbour's nine year old. That, that, that is how guilty I feel for paying the BBC's fucking license fee. Moving on, Ms. Marvel, trailblazing Muslim superhero goes gaming. Fucking, yeah, because we're all obsessed with trailblazing Muslim superheroes. You know, my old man, he wakes up and he flicks through his newspaper and he, and he thinks, I want to know what trailblazing Muslim superheroes are getting up to today. Fuck the markets and world affairs. Tell me about trailblazing Muslim superheroes. It's the representation, of representation in gaming I've waited for my whole life. Marvel's Avengers are assembling once again, not on the big screen, but for a blockbuster video game. Fuck me. So it's not even a film, it's a shitty little video game. It features many superheroes, but they're joined by Kamala Khan, the Muslim American teenager of Pakistani heritage. Woohoo! I first heard of Miss Marvel from the comics a few years ago, said Maria Asfar, a 25 year old gamer. Uh, you're a bit too old to be getting excited about this love. I immediately thought it was so cool when I read her background was like mine. Being Pakistani Muslim and a girl. You're 20 fucking five! It's <laughs> Anyway, listen, so bull bullshit, they give you the whole fucking rundown on it, you know, point to some glorious Tekken fucking bloke who looks like the fucking Sultan of Dubai or whatever, yeah, he looks, he's striking a manly pose there like he's off to his harem, but you know, whatever he's up to, you do your thing, uh, Shasheen, nobody cares, BBC, nobody cares, this shouldn't be on your homepage for me to find when I'm trying to look for real news, yeah? Just, just knock it off. We're paying for this fucking drivel. And just to f finish on that story, they don't need to represent you. That is nonsense that social justice warriors come up with so they could fucking piss off nerds that like stuff. Most people who buy and read comics and collect comics are like white dudes. In this day and age, middle-aged fucking white dudes. And they thought, let's ruin that for them, even though hardly any teenage Muslims from America buy the fucking things. They're serving a fucking customer base that doesn't exist. Yeah, that's why the comics fucking industry is dead. Because 90% of the people that buy the fucking things are middle-aged fat white blokes. And they're now catering to fucking 17 year old Muslim Americans, a tiny demographic that doesn't buy the fucking things anyway. So you tell me why that's logical. Anyway, there's plenty of channels for nerds on YouTube. Go and watch one of them if you give a fucking monkey's fart what a Muslim American fucking teenager gets up to. Um, but yeah, you don't need to be represented, do you? When I was a kid, I loved uh, Red Dwarf uh, and I liked Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and I'm not a cat or an android or a black man or a half black man or a fat black lawyer or a short ass black preppy kid or the, none of them. I wasn't sitting there going, I want to see a hairy northern Englishman on my television or I'll be devastated. It, it's, it's a fiction of the far left 
to create more division with their Marxist identity politics, make everybody bitter and twisted and resentful so we can change the fucking world. Bullshit. You don't need to be represented. That is fucking nonsense. Seriously, tell me if you disagree. Did, do you, did you only look up to heroes that looked and sounded like you when you were a kid? Because I was very underserved as a northern cunt from fucking a shithole town in England. I had no heroes to look up to if they had to look and sound like me. So fuck off. Will Smith. Yeah, he, he looks and sounds like me. More identity politics. I've been stared at in disbelief when I introduce myself. Have you? Really? For the past five years, BBC News has invited entrepreneurs to share their advice. Here, four black business founders have been guests to discuss how their skin colour has affected the way they navigate the business world. Like anybody else navigates the business world, yeah? Oprah Winfrey didn't feel the need to talk about this all the time when she was building up a media empire. I don't see why Ojoma Idegwu has to go on about it in 2020. It wasn't really a thing in 1995. I don't know why it'd be a thing in 2020. Ojima said, it's a fashion label for plus size women. Fucking hell. Look at the clip of her. No wonder it's for plus size women. Because she'd need to stitch four fucking normal human sized dresses together to fit in the fucking thing. Is that a euphemism? She eventually took the plunge on starting her own business because she looks like a seaborn mammal. I must start off by saying how immensely proud I am of the colour of my skin. Get over it. We got over it in the 90s and the noughties. We were over it. You couldn't have made it a thing again. Being a black entre entrepreneur means I have to work twice as hard. Really? I'm dealing with constant microaggressions, backhanded compliments from people. Just hatred, isn't it? Why didn't Ojoma Idegwu stay where people were, weren't evil? I've been stared at in disbelief at business events. <laughs> of course you have, love. London, it's like 50% minorities now. So, not really minorities, if you think about it. Diverse. London, less than 50% white British. And apparently she's been stared at in disbelief in fucking business meetings. Yeah? You believe that? She wouldn't have been stared at in disbelief at a business meeting in L London in like 1950. Because there was at least, you know, tens of thousands of them in the UK at that point. You expect me to believe that she's walking in in 2020 in London and people are going, Fucking hell, it's a black. Shut up. Uh, in fact, no, I'm not even going to read the rest of them, but you can guess what it is. Same with Jamal, same with Gerard Manu, same with Kike Onywinde. There are not enough black people ruling over you filthy, evil British people. <laughs> the only thing about the whole, that whole fucking thing that I disbelieve is the fucking claims of the lunatics that they interviewed. Yeah. We didn't stare in disbelief at the two black kids in my year in school in like 1994. So, I, and this is in Middlesbrough in the northeast. I don't believe that black people are getting stared at in disbelief in London when there's more black people than fucking white people. Do you? This one's class. Look at the state of that. We're talking about COVID-19 and the black death. How the Black Death made the rich richer. Fuck me. Like, full-blown peak communism as part of their COVID-19 fucking reporting. COVID-19, why you should drown rich people in the bath. When a third of Europe's population was lost, wealth concentrated into tiny groups. Could COVID-19 trigger something similar? It said the Black Death killed 80% of those who caught it. In Aberdeen, John of Fordham, a Scottish chronicler, recorded... The sickness befell people everywhere, but especially the middling and lower classes, rarely the great. It generated such horror that children did not dare to visit their dying parents, nor parents their children, but fled for fear of contagion as if from leprosy or a serpent. These lines could almost have been written today. <laughs> uh, could the, could the, BBC? The sudden loss of at least a third of Europe's population didn't lead to an even redistribution of wealth for everyone. Instead, people responded to the devastation by keeping more money within the family. What the fuck's wrong with that? Again, speaking as a working class twat, what, what do, you, do you expect perfect strangers to either give the money to you or give it to their own children? Like, what the fuck do they want from them? 
It didn't lead to an even redistribution of wealth for everyone. What should lead to an even redistrib redistribution of wealth for everyone? Oh yeah, hardcore communism at the point of a fucking gun. That's what you think should lead to redistribution of wealth for everyone. But normal humans, even those that are on the left and have a bit of disdain for greedy, mega-rich corporations, even they probably don't think that any minor pandemic should lead to the even redistribution of wealth for everyone. So what the fuck are you talking about? It's fucking ridiculous from start to finish. And look, the huge mobilizations of people and money which governments and corporations have deployed shows the big organizations can reshape themselves and the world extraordinarily rapidly if they wish. This gives real grounds for optimism concerning our collective capacity to re-engineer energy production, transport, food systems and much else. The Green New Deal, which many policymakers have been sponsoring. Just a, an excuse to slag off the rich for no good reason. Advocate for murderous communism and the forcible redistribution of wealth. And finally talk up the Green New Deal, which they say, well, they basically make it out completely uncritically. It's fucking brilliant. If they really wanted to help the entire world, they would definitely institute the Green New Deal. And that's why many policymakers have been sponsoring it. What they don't say is that the ones that have been sponsoring it have got heads full of cow shit and nobody with any fucking sense from the Chancellor of the Exchequer down thinks that anyone who isn't a fucking maniac should be enacting the Green New Deal. So fuck off BBC with your evil anti-family headlines and I will leave whatever paltry sum I have after my liver explodes and I collapse in a gutter. I'll be leaving my money to my family and friends. Thanks. Y you keep your fucking mitts off my paltry possessions, redistributing them as you wish, you fucking communist cunts. Fucking unbelievable. Can you but can Despicable. Even the headline is despicable. From the homepage. Oh, how the Black Death made the rich richer. Let's just wind people up during a pandemic. What a bunch of fucking shitheads. Moving on. Richard Medley's sorry for misjudged domestic violence advice. Now he is wanting to cheer us up. Something lighter. <laughs> Obviously there's nothing good about domestic violence. But this is funny just because of how much of a twat Richard Medley is. He is a twat. And this is just a great way of displaying that he's got the common sense of a fucking flip-flop. Richard Madeley has apologised after, after he was criticised for giving dangerous advice in a newspaper column. He was accused of downplaying a reader's fears that their neighbour might be suffering domestic violence. Writing in the Daily Telegraph, Madeley told the reader, if they were going to kill each other, they'd have done it by now. <laughs> uh, he said he's very annoyed with himself for having misjudged his response. I think Richard Madeley should work at the call centre for the police, you know, like... 999 emergency. Police. Hello. My next door neighbour. He's punching fuck out of his wife. I think he's going to kill her. Ah, he'd have killed her ages ago if he was going to do that. Uh, hello. Quality. We found your calling in life, Richard. And finally, I don't want to bring up the stuff I've covered during the week. David Starkey. BLM bullshit. The Premier League. Why can't they leave this lie? They don't want to forget about it. This is only four days ago. They can't leave it alone. We've just had fucking angry mobs of 50,000 activists congregating in London. And they're like, oh, that's fine. It's fine. Now they still want to have a go, Dominic Cummings, for having to drive. Are you fucking shitting me, lads? Are you? You are pulling my pisser, Andy Verity. Surely you are. A law student is hoping to bring private prosecution for the PM's top aide and has been told there is enough evidence for a realistic prospect of conviction. Oh, fucking, of course she has. Because our fucking courts are fucking bent as well, aren't they? The Supreme Court that Blair set up in the UK needs disbanding as well as the BBC because it's as bent as a fucking £8 note. Marsha Talifar from London sought formal advice from senior criminal barristers over his trips during lockdown. They say there is sufficient evidence in the public domain to prosecute for two breaches. For, for the Coronavirus Health Protection Regulations 2020. <laughs> so we're not going to prosecute the 50,000 violent thugs that punched fuck out a policeman in the middle of the street during the coronavirus lockdown. 
not going to prosecute them, but we're definitely going to get this cunt who took a drive and numerous police forces have already said he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that about the size of it. We can have the angry mob, but we can't have going for a drive on your own. Really? Downing Street has not commented, yes, because they shouldn't fucking credit you cunt. They should never speak to the BBC ever again. I'd rather go and have a chat with Osama Bin Laden than the fucker that runs the BBC. I'll tell you that much. And Osama's dead, but he'd probably still be more interesting to talk to than the fucking mutants that work for the BBC. Miss Telefar says she singled out Mr Cummings because he was involved in government meetings about the coronavirus. Oh, fuck off. She singled him out because he made Brexit happen and you've never got over it and you're a communist and you guys don't take loss lightly. Someone has to die when you lose. Advised by Watford solicitors, she asked Benjamin Douglas QC and Nathaniel Rudolph of Bedford Row Chambers to consider a range of potential offences. They concluded there was sufficient evidence to bring a prosecution. It states that during the emergency, no person may leave the place where they are living without reasonable excuse. So he was ill, very ill, and he was worried about his child. That's not reasonable excuse. But being pissed off because a foreign criminal who held a pistol to a pregnant woman's stomach and then got killed by an incompetent police officer in a foreign country 4,000 miles away, that is reasonable excuse to go into the streets, form an angry, angry mob and punch a policeman's horse in the face. <laughs> if you say so, boys. There she is. You've got to get the obligatory shamelessly self-promoting selfie in there. She's crowdfunding the legal challenge. Fucking. Let's just see how she's doing, shall we? Just out of interest. I cannot believe she's got 42 grand. Clearly, these lefty cunts have got far too much money. I sent her that. Her duh. Prosecute a man that drove home. Protests are cool, though. Yeah, look at that. You can't make this fucking shit up, can you? You can't make it up. I can't believe they've got the brass neck to even do it after the shit they've got up to for the last month. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's the BBC for the week. A load of fucking mad mental Marxism, crazy communist propaganda, and middle class fucking first world problems by staggeringly privileged black people that begged to be let into the UK over the last 40 years, made their way there by any possible way they could, even sneaking in, coming in in dinghies, breaking the law to get there, and then begging to be fucking allowed to stay when they got in. And all of a sudden, we're all staring at them in disbelief, and everything they do is ten times as hard. Yeah, cheers then. Of course it fucking is. I'll tell you who it's hard for. White working class scruffy bastards who don't get any additional help because of the colour of the skin. That's who it's fucking hard for. Or Joma. You fucking gargantuan land mammal. And you fucking know it. You know it. They don't believe their own bullshit, do they? They don't. That's why a hundred thousand of the fuckers make their way to England every year. Because we're all cunts. Yeah, cheers then. That's the news for this week. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Fucking hell. Now I'm going to go and bleach my eyeballs and psych myself up again for next week's episode. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and click the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And share it if you want to do me a favour and promote the fucking shit that I come out with every Sunday for your viewing pleasure. Cheers. Take it easy. <laughs>